Alright guys, this is Matt from Matt's World Ed Education and uh, in today's video I want to show you the solution to question 7 and in today's video I'm going to be uh, showing you this particular question from uh, step 1 of 2019, fully enough. Um, and what I want to do is to basically go over this question with you and what I consider to be quite an unusual question. And it's talking about number theory here and something I've not quite seen anything like this since like the pre-2005 era when something similar came up about uh, proving there's infinitely many primes which was a lovely question I'd like to do a video on that uh, but in this question it's actually giving the steps to prove that uh, uh, root 2 plus root 3 is irrational and it's actually it's already actually giving you the various steps which I, I find really really helpful in this type of question so it's it's going from step one to step two, and it's going through the motions uh, until finally proving that root two plus root three is irrational. And it's asking you to explain uh, and effectively just prove each of these, well, not each of these different steps, but um, steps one, three, and four, and then uh, using that information to uh, make the conclusion of step number five. Uh, and then on uh, part two, it's it's not giving you anything else, but it's asking you to do uh, something similar uh, to prove that root six, root 6 plus root 7 is irrational by, again, uh, going through a similar uh, process. And then finally, it wraps up by saying, why can't, uh, why can divisibility by 3 not be used in this case? Uh, so we're going we're gonna to jump straight in. And if you're not familiar with this problem, then, and you've not done it yet, then... Again, be sure to pause the video, give it a good hour, um, any amount of time really where you, you, you're actually thinking about the problem because you'll get much more out of the problem by um, basically doing the problem yourself and having a go uh, rather than me showing you uh, step by step and you guys not being familiar. It's like a crossword puzzle. If someone's already shown you how to do the puzzle, uh, that can be quite easy to understand in some ways, but then... Um, actually figuring out the cross crossword puzzle yourself and then getting to the answer is it, it, the value in that is just um, invaluable okay right let's uh, jump straight in uh, to uh, the problem so what's the first thing that we want to do in this uh, problem we want to uh, go for step one so let's do uh, let's do just that So step one, it's asking us to prove that um, a equals 3k plus or minus 1 for some integer k uh, is one more than a multiple of 3. So first of all, we've got three we've got three cases here, haven't we? We are a can either be written as 3k or a can be written as 3k plus or minus 1. Now it's already telling you that the integer a is not divisible by 3. Uh, it, already, it already gives you that information just here. So we can actually we can actually disregard this case. So now what have we got? We've got a, uh, a squared is simply going to be equal to... Uh, that's going to be... a squared will be 9k squared plus 6k plus 1. Or a squared is going to be equal to 9k squared uh, and that would be just plus 1. So we can see here, we can see that um, we can see that this section here uh, is divisible by 3. Um, uh, we can see, I'll just put, I'm just going to put div <laughs> just to make it simple. Um, and we also know here because we know that nine is, div uh, three is, divis nine is divisible by 3. So we know that 9k squared must also be divisible by 3. So in either case, uh, so in either case, um, what's it saying? a squared uh, is one more than a multiple of 3, uh, which we know because we've got, uh, we got a remainder of 1. Uh, when 3 divides a squared and that's that's it really for the first uh, for the first step uh, now, now let's move on to step 
Now let's move on to step three. So we need to show, we need we basically need to show that a squared, uh, sorry, a to the four plus b to the four is equal to 10 a squared b squared. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, just as usual, I'm just gonna write, I'm just gonna copy this over. Step three. So, uh, what we need to do, we need to let uh, root two plus root three uh, be equal to a over b. Now, I can see you've got an a to the four, you've got a b to the four, you've got a squared, you've got a b squared. So, I'm thinking of just squaring both sides of, uh, of, of this expression that I've wrote out. And, and, and I suspect that I may have to square both sides again to get the uh, get the quartic terms as well, so let's just let's just let's just jump straight in and see where we go. Uh, so root two times root two is is equal to two, and you got I'm ju I'm just I'm just imagining uh, that I'm multiplying out the brackets to save me having to write it all out again, uh, and then we've got two lots of root two times root three plus root three times root three, which is three, equals a squared over b squared. So therefore, we've got, uh, what have we got? Uh, we've got 5, and then if you times the uh, left and right hand side by b squared, you're going to have 5b squared plus uh, 2 root 6 b squared is equal to a squared. So let's just look at this now. Let's actually call this equation 1. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides of this equation again and see uh, see how we get on. So let's just do just that. Uh, that gives us 25 b to the 4 plus uh, that's going to be 20 root 6 uh, b to the 4. Uh, that's 20 plus root 6 b to the 4 plus... Uh, 24, uh, which is 2 times uh, 2 root 6 times 2 root 6 is 4 times 6, which is in fact equal to uh, 24. Sorry, that should be a b squared. Uh, b to the 4, sorry. Been out. Sorry, my computer's uh, playing silly buggers. So what we're going to do, we're going to call this, um, well, we're going to simplify it first, and then we're going to call it equation 2. Okay, that's better. So 25 plus 24, let's uh, gather up all the rational terms. We've got a 49, b to the 4, plus 20, root 6, b to the 4. And that's equal to a to the power of 4. And there we've got equation 2. Now, what can we do? What can we do to get um, to get this following uh, term here? So that's my alarm going off just once. All right, guys. Uh, so uh, we're back in business. Uh, so, okay, first of all, let's just do a quick uh, situation report here. So we've got... Uh, we've got equation one. We've got equation two at the moment. So how? What can we do to equation one uh, to get something similar to the result that we asked to prove in step three? Well, these root six uh, look a bit untidy to me. Uh, that's just my take. And ideally, I'd like to make these a pair of simultaneous equations, and I'd like to somehow try and eliminate um, uh, this term here. 2 root 6 uh, b, to, uh, b squared and obviously eliminate uh, the 20 root 6 b to the 4. So what I'm thinking of doing is times in both sides of equation 1 by 10 uh, by ten b squared and then that would give us a 20 root 6 and we'll, we should have a pair of simultaneous equations then and uh, we can see how we get on. 
So let's just let's do just that. Let's um, let's times let's times uh, equation one by ten b squared. So therefore, uh, we'll have uh, we're going to have fifty b to the four plus twenty root six b to the four equals ten b squared a squared. We can call this equation three. Now, if we compare equation three to equation two, uh, we can see what we've got here are a pair of simultaneous equations. There's many other methods, by the way, of um, of doing this, but I find this to be the easiest. Uh, so if you subtract, if you do a subtracting thing here, you end up, you actually end up with b to the four equals ten. Should be a ten. Uh, b squared a squared minus a to the four. And then all we've got to do now is just rearrange this equation. So if we bring the a to the four to the other side, we've got a to the four plus b to the four uh, is equal to ten. B squared a squared. And there we have it. That's uh, step three. Uh, it's basically been, uh, well, it's basically just been proven, really. Uh, now it's saying, now it's talking about uh, step four now. It's saying, so if a is divisible by three, then b is divisible by three. So what, so what is it talking about here? Well, somehow we're going to be, we're going to have to use this uh, equation here that we've just proven. So suppose, let's just suppose uh, a is divisible by 3. So therefore, uh, 3 must also divide into a squared, and 3 must divide into a to the 4. Now let's just take this bit of information here. If, if 3 goes into a squared, we know that 3 must go into 10 b squared a squared which is equal to the, the right-hand side. So that implies that 3 must divide uh, the left-hand side, which is equal to a to the 4 plus b to the 4. Now, since uh, since 3 divides into uh, a to the 4, then 3 must divide into b to the 4. Now, since 3 is a prime number, uh, 3 must divide into b since 3 is prime. So that is, a, again, that's a simple fact of, uh, of mathematics. Okay, um, if you're not too sure about that, then by all means, uh, make a comment in the comment section. I will do my best to try and justify that in more detail. But there you have it, that is step four. Now, what it's asking to do now, it's saying, prove that these are all valid, which we've, which we've done, and the conclusion five follows in the previous steps of uh, the arguments. Now, the best way to do this, I'm just going to write this out again. The best way to do this is uh, is what I do best, and attack the whole thing in a somewhat brutal uh, fashion. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to suppose that root 2 plus root 3 is rational, and then try and come to some sort of contradiction. So, let's... Uh, I'm going to let root 3 plus root 3, uh, root 2 plus root 3 equal a over b, uh, such that the highest common factor of a and b is equal to 1. And, that, and all that means, basically, is that a over b can't simplify anymore. So it's like, for instance, 4 over 6 uh, would, have a, would, have a highest, would have a highest common factor of uh, 2. Uh, but 4 over 6 can be simplified to 2 over 3. So it's just, it's basically a fraction in its simplest form. That's all it's talking about there, so don't be don't be put off by that uh, notation. So now we've got, we've got two cases, haven't we? Uh, we've either got A can either be written as 3K, uh, or A can be written as 3K plus or minus 1. So let's go with the first case. Let's go with case one. Let's let a equal 3k. Uh, so, of course, that means that 3 divides a. Now, 
from part four, uh, so we, we've already found that out from this fourth part here, so three must divide B. But we've already got a contradiction because um, the uh, highest common factor of A and B is equal to one. And what I've, what I've just shown now is that the highest common factor of A and B is actually three. So that's where the contradiction uh, comes from. So let's move on to uh, case two. Uh, in case two, uh, being that A uh, equals three K plus or minus one. Uh, so that means that B must also be equal to, I'm gonna say three L uh, plus or minus one, just because A and B are different numbers and I, I do wanna sort of uh, generalize it the best I can. Now let's go back to the let's go back to the results here that we uh, showed, which was a to the four plus b to the four equals ten a squared b squared. <laughs> now we know that um, we know that when three divides the right hand side, uh, you're going to have a remainder of one because 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 of this because of this value ten uh, just here. Uh, obviously 10 divided by 3 is going to be 3 remainder 1 and uh, since since 10 is basically uh, the coefficient of the right hand side effectively uh, it really doesn't matter what 10 uh, is times by the a squared, b squared or anything else can do what it wants you're always going to have a remainder of 1 regardless uh, but then obviously uh, if we we know that the right hand side gives us uh, a remainder of one, but if we consider if we consider a to the four, uh, if we if we imagine times in f and out, we you can you can end up with um, we can end up with we can end up with like nine k squared, um, I've plus six k um, plus one all squared or a to the four is gonna be equal to nine k squared plus one all squared. But either way, uh, the only the only value that you're gonna get without k is actually gonna be the value one. So therefore, uh, when three divides uh, a to the four, you're gonna have a remainder of one. And similarly, when three divides b to the four, uh, you're also going to have a remainder of 1. Therefore, when 3 divides a to the 4 plus b to the 4, you're actually going to have a remainder of, uh, of 2. Okay, uh, and there you have it. You've got, you got a contradiction there because... Um, it's giving you a remainder of 2. So you've got a contradiction because you've got a different remainder on the right hand side as we as we showed just here. Okay guys, uh, and that contradiction uh, basically means that uh, therefore root 3, uh, root 2 plus root 3 cannot be uh, cannot be shown in that format uh, and it very quickly follows that root 2 plus root 3 is irrational. And that concludes the first part of, uh, of the question, guys. All right, guys, so now uh, let's move on to part two. And it's saying prove by means of a similar method, uh, but this time using divisibility of five instead of three, that root six plus root seven is irrational. Okay, so it's basically saying similar method. So let's just show clearly steps one, three, and four again are all valid uh, in this case. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to suppose that uh, a is not divisible by five. Okay, and let's uh, let's just take it from let's just take it from there. So, what do we know? We know that a can be equal to five k, um, which we can disregard. We also know that a uh, can be equal to 5k plus or minus 1 and a uh, is also 
I can't forget, is equal to 5k plus or minus 2. Now let's just let's try and uh, let's try and show uh, that for some integer k, uh, a squared is one more than a multiple of five. Let's say, or, or let's let's try and see what the remainders are as we examine both these cases. So let's do just that. So in the first case, we've got a squared is equal to. It's either going to be twenty-five k squared plus ten k plus one. Or a squared is going to be simply 25k squared plus 1. But in both cases, you're always going to have a remainder, you're always going to have a remainder 1. So we can say, well, when 5 divides a squared, we've got remainder 1. Okay, so that's the first, that's the first bit that we need to uh, take into consideration. And now let's look at the second case here. We've got uh, a squared equals 25k squared plus 10 k plus 4 or a squared is equal to 25 k squared plus 4 but in, uh, in either case uh, in either case you know 25 k squared plus 10 k is divisible by 5 because 25, uh, 5 goes into 25 and 5, 5 goes into 10 and uh, in the second case here we can also see that 5 goes into 25 so uh, in both cases we've got uh, 5 over a squared gives us a remainder of 4. So that's going to be that's going to be useful. We may need to use that bit of information later on in the question. I suspect that, that uh, this first bit will come into play when we need to prove that root 6 plus root 7 is, uh, is rational. So that's, uh, so that's basically step number 1 that we've covered there. Now let's uh, move on to step number 2. Um, was it sorry? Step number three. Uh, we don't need to worry about number two. I don't think, do we? Uh, and we what we what we're going to have to do now is uh, prove something similar to this uh, to this formula here, but in terms of root six and root seven. So we'll just follow the same method before. We'll we'll let root six plus root seven be equal to a over b. Okay, and we'll. We'll do the same as before. We'll uh, we'll square both sides and then square both sides again, and then we will see what we can do about uh, getting rid of those square roots like we did before. And see if we can get a formula similar to the one shown here in step three. Sounds sounds like a strategy. So uh, root six times root six is six. Root six, seven times root seven seven. Six plus seven is equal to thirteen. Plus uh, 2 times root 6 times root 7 is simply 2 root 42 equals a squared over b squared. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to times the, uh, the left and right uh, sides of the equation by b squared just to make uh, the format a little bit easier to uh, deal with. So we've got this. So we've got this uh, equation. I'm going to call that equation 1. Now I'm going to uh, square this equation again. So that's going to give us 13 times 13, which is 169, b to the 4, plus, ooh, that's going to be 2 times 13 times 2 root 42, b to the 4, plus uh, root 42 times root 42 is 42, 42 times 2 times 2 is 42 times 4, and 42 times 4 uh, is equal to... Uh, let's see, uh, it's 168, that is, uh, b to the 4, which equals a to the 4. So what we got now, we've got 169 plus 168, which is 337, b to the 4, plus 2 times 2, uh, 2 times 2, uh, it's 4, 4 times 13 is 26 times 2, which is 52. Root 42, uh, b to the 4 equals a to the 4. And we're going to call that equation 2. Now, as before, uh, we've got to somehow combine these two equations, but it's we can't really do much at the moment about that but I don't like the look of these square root terms because 
it makes it makes the whole thing go more complicated than what it should be. So let's try and eliminate those and see what we get. What do we need to times the first equation by to get the square root term the same as the second? Now looking at that, I can see that you're going to have to times the first equation by 26b squared. And then that will give us the same term here and we can we can just do the same strategy before. So let's just, let, let's do that. Let's, let's times equation one by 26b squared. Uh, so therefore, uh, what we'll end up getting is 338b to the 4 plus 52, root 42, uh, b to the 4, uh, is equal to 26 b squared a squared and we're going to call that equation 3. So now what we need to do, let's combine let's uh, combine uh, equation uh, 2 and 3. So if you imagine subtracting equation 2 from equation 3 uh, you'll get some cancellations and, uh, and this is what you'll this is what you'll end up getting. Uh, you end up with a to the four uh, equal to twenty six b squared a squared minus b to the four. Now, if you bring the b to the four over, you've got a to the four plus b to the four equals twenty six b squared a squared. And now we have it. That's uh, that's step four. Uh, all, uh, all sorted out for us. Now we need to use this information now to try and prove. Uh, we need to use this information now to try and prove that uh, uh, root six plus root seven is uh, irrational. So, uh, so step number five. Let's let's just assume that uh, root six plus root seven is rational, and try and force some sort of contradiction. So we're going to let root 6 plus root 7 be equal to a over b. Uh, again, such that the highest common factor of a and b is equal to 1. Now, um, so we've got the first case, case 1, uh, let's let a equal 5k. Hang on, I think I've not... I've skipped a skip. I've skipped a step, haven't I? Sorry about that. I think I've, I think I've jumped the gun a little bit too much there. Um, we need to go. On, we need to move on to step four, don't we? So let's just uh, suppose that uh, a is divisible by five. Okay. Uh, so that means that uh, five will go into a squared, which means that five is divisible by 5 divided into the right hand side. So of course that means that 5 uh, will divide into the left hand side. But since 5 divides into a to the 4, that means that uh, 5 must divide into b to the 4, which means that 5 must go into b. Uh, and that's since b is prime. If B wasn't prime, we wouldn't be able to uh, prove uh, this next step. Because if you think about it, you've got you've got B times B times B times B is equal to is equal to let's say five times five times K. Now, the only way, like the like the only way that uh, Five can go into this, uh, into this left hand side here. Is if uh, five goes into each of the individual, uh, of the individual values. Those individual values happen to be the same in this case because it's b to the four. Hence, five must go into b. Yeah, if you've got any questions about that, just uh, give us a shout in the comments section. Right. Uh, so let's go back to step five now and let's wrap this whole thing up. So we're going to let uh, root 6 plus root 7 equal 
ההבדל. So case one, uh, what have we got? We've got, let's select A equal 5K. So that means that uh, A, so that means that five goes into A. And we've already shown that uh, that implies that five goes into B uh, by step four. But of course, that means that the highest common factor of A and B equals five. Which is uh, which gives us a contradiction. So therefore, a can't be equal to five k. So we can disregard uh, that case. Now let's go on to uh, let's consider now case two. In fact, let's. I've got an easier way here. We know, we know already that uh, you get. I'm just going to use the first bit to make things a bit easier. You know when 5 goes into a squared, you've either got a remainder 1 or a remainder 4. Okay, uh, so let's just do this. You know when 5 goes into a squared, you've either got a remainder of 1 or a remainder of 4. So you got to think, if 5 goes into a to the 4, you're either going to have a remainder of 1 again, or if you imagine the 4 times in itself, right, as we as we as we'd shown, hang on, as we'd shown here, so a, a squared equals 25k squared plus 4, you've, you've got all these k's here, if you, a to the 4 is just going to be, if you just put the brackets and square it, uh, you're going to have a load of terms containing k, and then you're going to have a 16 at the end. So in that case, you're going to have a remainder of... Um, uh, in that case, you're going to have a remainder of 16. So I just wanted to explain that to you. I'm not, I'm not just throwing out random numbers. But then, of course, five go, uh, if 5 goes into 16, that is actually equivalent to remainder 1. So in both cases, you're always going to have a remainder 1. And then, similarly... Uh, when 5 goes into b to 4 by a similar argument, uh, you're also either going to have a remainder 1 or a remainder 16, which is basically remainder 1 because 5 into 16 leaves you a remainder 1 anyway. Okay? So, therefore, uh, what's your remainder going to be when 5 divides into a to the 4 plus b to the 4? Uh, that's actually going to leave you a remainder of 1 plus 1, which is actually giving you a remainder of 2. Okay, so we've we've examined uh, we've examined the right hand side of uh, that special equation, which we uh, we've, we've okay we've examined the left hand side here. So. If you divide 5 into the left-hand side here, we've already established you're going to get a remainder of 2. Now, what's the remainder going to be if you divide 26 b squared a squared by 5? Well, it's obvious. It's just going to be 1. Because let's just ignore, let's just ignore what's going on here. If you just focus on the 26, 5 goes into 25, leaving you a remainder 1. So, uh, when 5... Uh, goes into 26 a squared b squared you're actually gonna have a remainder one and there's a contradiction so basically uh, and that means that um, root 6 plus root 7 could not be expressed in this form uh, which means that root 6 plus root 7 is irrational Okay, uh, and but that's not the whole story yet. We've still got one last bit of this question to uh, to consider. Now it's saying why can divisibility be free not be used in the, in this case? So let's uh, let's just let's just have a look at this then. 
and we'll rewrite this again. So we've got 26 a squared b squared equals a to the 4 plus b to the 4. Now, uh, when 3 divides the left hand side, uh, 3 goes into 24, uh, you're actually going to have a remainder of 2. Now, at the very beginning, at the very beginning, we showed, like, basically, A can only, if you imagine A is equal to 3K plus or minus 1. Um, what's the remainder that you get when 3 divides into A? You get a remainder of 1. Uh, also, when 3 divides into B, you get a remainder of 1. Therefore, um, when 3 goes into Hang on, that should be to the four. You've got a remainder two. So the remainder that you get, it's actually the same on, on the both sides. Um so therefore, you know, division division by three uh wouldn't sorry about the writing by the way. Division by 3 wouldn't be appropriate um, since no contradiction has been obtained. Now, if you were to write that in the exam, that would be acceptable. The examiner would be perfectly happy with that. And I'll just show you the mark scheme, actually, uh, because it's... Like in in the mark scheme, it's only it is it, it's only actually worth um, it's only actually worth one mark. Uh, let's just go. I'll just quickly show you now. You can see it, it's saying that's that's all it is. It's just this one mark at the end, and that's something I also want to show you about the mark scheme here, because the reason why I love making these videos is because I love to break down everything step by step, just so it's easy to understand. Um, uh, you can you can actually go on the Cambridge uh, website and it gives you all this uh, it gives you all this inf gives you all this um, information, but like without without a detailed video like the one I'm I'm hoping uh, that I'm showing you, this is all you've really got access to. You've got and I'll be honest with you, if you're not too sure and you've had a go at the problem, it can be quite uh, hard to understand when it starts talking about. Like in the mark scheme here, it's talking about mod three, and uh, you know that that makes sense at university level, but that may not actually. I'm not even sure if that's on the A level syllabus. Uh, it may have changed since uh, since I did A levels a long time ago, but I just wanted to sort of explain it in a much easier way that hopefully uh, you guys can understand. And of course, if you've got any questions, then by all means, leave me a comment in the comment section below. I love making these videos, by the way. I get a huge buzz out of helping other people. And, um, yeah, uh, if there's any questions that aren't on YouTube that I haven't covered, then uh, give me the year, give me the paper, give me the question, and I'll be more than happy to make a video about it and explain it in more detail for you. Okay, guys, if you like this video, smash that like button. Uh, subscribe and tap that notification bell. We'll be coming out with more content and more step videos just like the one I've shown you here. I aim to cover all the step paper questions uh, in the very near future uh, to help you guys prepare for next year. So thank you very much and see you in the next video.